For the last few years, one of my absolute favorite ways to have fun with friends has been the Jackbox Party Pack series. If you're looking for a party game, this series is something I can't recommend enough. Each entry in the series is a pack of five distinct games, typically allowing up to eight players at once. It's all made super accessible for any group, as only one person needs to own a pack. All they have to do is put the game on their TV, or stream the screen through Discord or Twitch. Then everyone else can simply watch along and use a browser tab on their computer or mobile device to enter the game's room code and join in instantly. No controllers, no downloads, no accounts. Just use the you already have with you. Very simple and easy. Much like Kahoot, but way more fun. Because instead of boring ass quizzes, it's fun party games. I mean, sometimes they are boring ass quizzes, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Ever since I was introduced to this series in 2019 with Pack 5, I've been super into it. It's fun to play, it's fun to watch, and it's just a great way to interact with groups of all sizes. Friends, friends of friends, and complete strangers alike. In December of 2022, me and some other wacky fellows took it upon ourselves to play and rank each and every Jackbox Party Pack game, and it got me so interested in the Jackbox series that I decided it'd be fun to make an actual full-on review of each pack, and eventually build a comprehensive ranking list of each individual game the series has to offer. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do, starting with the very first Jackbox Party Pack. Now, before I frankly tear this pack apart, I think it's only fair to provide a bit of context as to how the Jackbox series started and became what it is today. I think it'll help justify Pack 1's weaknesses a little bit, because oh boy does it have weaknesses. This pack has words, but So, back in the late 90s, Jackbox Games, formerly known as Jellyvision, released a hefty series of multiple choice trivia games called You Don't Know Jack for the PlayStation 1 and PC. The series was well known for putting an entertaining spin on your everyday trivia, striving to insert as much humor and character into the experience as possible. A good handful of these games are still available to play right now on Steam for a low price, and I think they're super neat to look back on nowadays if you're a fan of the modern Jackbox games like I am. Some really nostalgic stuff here, and still technically functional if you want to indulge in some severely outdated trivia. Cause yeah. These games are decades old at this point, and so are the questions. So, you may wonder why the f I decided to buy every single one of these considering all the questions predate my own existence, and my response? As the 90s faded away, Jellyvision struggled to keep the You Don't Know Jack franchise successful. The demand for CD-ROM games for the PC had drastically decreased due to home consoles becoming the new most popular way to play video games. There were entries of the series made for these platforms in an attempt to adapt to the change, but they flopped pretty hard. During the late 2000s though, Jellyvision was able to release some of their games on iOS devices and Facebook, two platforms that were exploding in popularity at the time. This put a ton of new eyes on the series and pretty much brought the company back to life. They then go on to rebrand as Jackbox Games as we know them today, and put out a few standalone releases such as Word Putts, Clone Booth, and of course, Lysewater and Fibbage. These two games, in addition to a new version of You Don't Know Jack, as well as two brand new party games, make up the very first Jackbox Party Pack, released in 2014. New Jackbox Party Packs have been released every October since, and that brings us right here to the present day. And with that, it's finally time to take a look at the five games that kicked off the Jackbox Party Pack series. Now, I actually told Pete to invite a bunch of people here so we could get a nice Jackbox shindig going, so, we got any takers, Pete? Uh, nah, I don't think any of the people I invited knew what Jackbox is. Alright, so we need some people to play Jackbox with. Oh, shit, what the f so, uh, best I was able to do was this. And even then, she was pretty reluctant. It took a lot of convincing. Okay, Discord it is. Scram. But she's really good at words, bud, dude, trust me. Get the hell out of here, man. Good lord. Up first is, you don't know, Jack. You Don't Know Jack 2015 You know, being the staple series and namesake of Jackbox games, it's only fitting that a variant of You Don't Know Jack makes an appearance in the very first party pack. If you've ever played any of the later Jackbox party packs, you're probably well aware of just how good they are at making trivia fun, especially for people like me who just couldn't give a damn about trivia. Most of the trivia games throughout the Jackbox party packs have some sort of unique twist to them, some kind of extra layer to the gameplay that gives them their own identity. And well, You Don't Know Jack 2015? doesn't do that, and instead, is just about the most vanilla trivia experience you can get from these packs. For the most part, you are straight up just answering multiple choice trivia questions. The most important aspect of this game though, and the YDKJ series in general, is the absolutely ludicrous presentation. The presentation of this game is so mentally insane, I just can't help but marvel at it sometimes. And trust me, I do mean that in a nice way. Even before you start playing, just while you're waiting in the lobby for everyone to join, you get to hear the most ridiculous sh** taking place in the background. What the f are you eating, man? Just some fucking baby carrots, bro. Whoa! But they look like big carrots, only way fucking smaller. That's just fucking it. I don't have time to fucking eat an adult fucking carrot, but with baby carrots, I can pop one in and be on my way. Like, 
what? And then when you actually start the game and think, all right, that was weird, but now that that's out of the way, we can finally just enjoy some trivia. I am Cookie Masterson, and I shaved my nipples for this, oh, so come on. Try. Yeah, this game is absurd, mentally ill, and honestly, I kind of love that about it. But it is still a trivia game, and I am still not a trivia fan, so how exactly do they take that ridiculousness and make a fun trivia game out of it? Well, you don't know Jack is treated sort of like a game show, hosted by Cookie Masterson and his group of wacky-ass friends, and all of them just flat out refuse to ask you a question the way a normal human being would. The whole gimmick of the YDKJ series is that none of the questions are asked in a straightforward, normal way. For example, this question reads, if Lady Gaga changed her name to the most common first word spoken by babies, what would she be called? Lady No, Lady Cat, Lady Mama, or Lady Dada? Obviously, the more mentally stable way to ask that question would be, what is the most common first word spoken by babies? And then present the four normal choices. But mental stability is not how this game rolls. Just about every question is like this. You will always have to do a bit of extra work before answering, simply just to figure out what you're being asked. The closest you'll get to a normal question is a dis or dat, where you get presented a handful of answers and have to guess whether they fall under this category, the other category, or both. Or questions like this one, where you have to put multiple answers in a correct order. In addition to those, any of the first 10 questions of the game could also involve a goofy-ass mini-segment, often featuring some crazy dipshit who's friends with the main host, as a host. Which titular religious group was founded by Sun One? With Good lord, so we've got Billy O'Brien the puppet, who has like 15 speech impediments that make it borderline impossible to answer the question he's asking. Like, even more than the usual questions. And we've also got this, uh, raisin. It's Foggy Facts with Old Man. Skeet's going up to, I forget. Jesus, so apparently this old man is thinking of something, so he's gonna Alzheimer'sly describe it to you so you can guess what he's thinking about. You thinking of Conkers, old man? Hey, Conkers, yeah! Yeah, these are some pretty strange mini-segments, and I didn't feel entirely safe while playing them, but they're neat little distractions, I guess. Aside from these different types of questions, the only other game mechanic in play here is the screw. Each player gets one screw per game, and upon using it, they get to screw another player into being forced to answer the current question in under five seconds. If the person you screwed gets the question wrong, you essentially steal that question is money value from the player. If they get it right, though, they steal it from you. I actually really like this feature. It provides a funny way to interact with other players during the trivia and allows for a bit of strategy. Don't stop screwing. <laughs> screwing Come you. on, man. Well, if you win this, then I'm dead. As you can tell, charm is a huge focus of this game. It does a lot to try and make this an interesting trivia experience, and I commend them for it. The jokes don't always land for me, but it at least feels like each and every question was given a good amount of thought and care, and I really do appreciate that. But I don't know, a big reason I don't usually care for trivia is because I just kinda don't know anything. And unlike future Jackbox trivia games, which alleviate that problem by providing fun side activities to succeed at, the quote unquote side activity of this game is literally just trying to decipher what the hell these people are saying to you. It can be funny, and it definitely makes for a trivia game with some pretty interesting questions, but I'm afraid that doesn't quite make up for the fact that I'm still just guessing the answers for the most part. That brings us to the final round, where this problem is most apparent. Round 3 is the Jack Attack round, where there's an answer in the background, and you gotta buzz in when you see another answer that matches. Like if the topic is houses, and the back background says Patrick from Spongebob Squarepants, you wait until the word rock appears and buzz in. First person to buzz correctly gets a lot of money, and anyone who buzzes incorrectly loses a lot of money. I've heard complaints about this final round, and how it doesn't work very well over streaming. Basically, the person hosting the game's at an unfair advantage because they're gonna see the answers about a second before everyone else does due to stream latency. And yeah, I'd imagine that probably makes this round pretty lame for those who care about it. Personally though, the issue I have with this round is simply, I still don't know anything about most of these prompts. And unlike the rest of the game, this is not multiple choice where you can at least make an educated guess or use the process of elimination to discern the correct answer. Here, you're just watching various words cycle through, having no f***ing idea if they relate to the answer in the background or not. Considering me and the group I played with weren't super knowledgeable about most of these questions, we honestly found it more beneficial to just never buzz in the whole time. Because if you buzz in incorrectly, you lose a ton of money and are pretty much just asking to lose the game. The payoff of buzzing correctly just isn't worth the risk. And that's pretty much You Don't Know Jack 2015. I really like the game's aesthetic and the way it's presented. It's very charismatic, but that's just not enough to keep me craving more, especially considering we've got much more interesting options for trivia in later party packs. I'd imagine that for a group of people who are actually into trivia, this would be loads of fun, but it's just not all that accessible for people like me who aren't. This game's also limited to only four players at a time, which is very small for Jackbox. If you just gotta play You Don't Know Jack, at least the one in pack five allows up to eight players, and is better in a few different ways. A better final round and randomized question orders, as opposed to this weird preset episodes thing they did here. Stupid. Definitely go for that one over this. Or better yet, just go somewhere else entirely. No offense to Jackbox games or anything, but you can definitely do a lot better than you don't know Jack in my opinion.
Up next is Drawful, one of the two games that were made specifically for this party pack, and is easily one of the best available here. Look, they even got this neat little feature where each player gets to draw their own crappy little profile picture. I love stuff like this. The concept of Drawful is that every player receives a prompt, and will have to draw it to the best of their ability. You really want to do the best you can to portray the prompt as accurately as possible, because naturally, after everyone's done with their drawing, they're presented one by one, and everyone has to guess what the artist's prompt was. The twist, though, is that rather than everyone continuously submitting guesses until someone's correct, players instead have to choose from a selection of possible answers. One of these answers is the prompt the artist received, but the rest of them are lies made up by the other guessers. It's up to the guessers to choose what they believe the artist's actual prompt was based on their drawing. If you can correctly identify the prompt the artist was given, both you and the artist get some points. But if someone chooses your fake answer thinking it's correct, you also get rewarded points for each player you fool. So essentially, as a guesser, you want to come up with the most reasonable interpretation of the drawing as you can, something that genuinely reads as a prompt the game would give a player. And as the artist, you want to make damn sure your drawing matches your specific prompt so well that it can't possibly be mistaken for something else. After everyone picks an answer, every fake prompt that fooled other players is shown one by one, revealing who wrote them and who picked them. After that, the real prompt is finally shown to everyone, alongside those who answered correctly. Do this for every player's drawing, then repeat the process with a new batch of drawings to two, then game over. I actually really like the concept of this game. It's a great twist on the typical Pictionary or Scribble experience. It can be really satisfying to pull shit an answer that ends up tricking people, and I honestly just really like games that let me draw stuff in general. And I must say, this game's title does not lie. Drawful. <laughs> yeah, these drawings are putrid. The drawing tools they give you are incredibly bare bones, as in, there are none. No eraser, no undo button, no alternate colors. So if you mess up, you're fucked. Honestly, I think this is for the best. Just makes the game quicker and funnier, and puts a lot more pressure on the artist not to screw up accurately portraying their prompt. I'd imagine this makes things a bit hard on players drawing with their fingers on their phone screen, but like, who cares, f them. There's not much else to say about the gameplay of Drawful, it's very simple and can be a good time, though I do have some critiques. For starters, the pacing could be better. The same can be said for a lot of these early Jackbox games. It can take a while to go from one drawing to the next, and an even longer while to go from drawing something to drawing the next thing. If you want a more rapid fire drawing game, I definitely recommend Scribble.io. You don't get the fun lying mechanic, but you do spend more time actually playing the game. The pacing problem is helped a bit in the standalone sequel Drawful 2 though, for what that's worth. Bit of a bigger Drawful issue though, is that some of the prompts in this game are just too damn specific, often to the point where it becomes blatantly obvious which of these answer choices wasn't written by someone who saw the drawing. I mean, when you get shown a picture of a blue oval and have to guess which of these answers was the prompt it was based on, it's pretty damn obvious no one looked at that and put rye bread, thus making rye bread clearly the correct answer. But at least a scenario like that could have been avoided if we got creative with our lies and made up some crazy shit about this oval that sounds reasonable. But with the wordier ones, like the other side of a black hole, I don't know man, that's just a really fucking specific prompt. One that's difficult to translate into an accurate drawing, and even more difficult to translate back into a reasonable fake answer. I mean, notice how the real prompt is wildly more specific than all the other lies here. In many cases, this is kind of a dead giveaway, since any lie that doesn't account for every last detail in the drawing is just naturally going to appear as a less accurate description than the real prompt. Again, this problem can be mitigated, but I still think the prompts could have been a bit easier to work with. But hey, at least they're still a billion times better than the ones in Drawful Animate in Pack 8. Yikes, can't wait for that one. I've got a bit more to say about Drawful, but that'll come up when we talk about Fibbage XL in a bit. That game follows a very similar format, and does it better in my opinion, for reasons I'll explain when the time comes. All this being said though, I want to reiterate that Drawful is still a fun game, and what I just complain about is in no way indicative of how every play session will go. It just happens enough for it to be noticeable. This is still easily one of, if not the best game in the first party pack, and in the end, a pretty good time. Well alright, that was one of the two new games made for this pack, now for the other one. It's time for my absolute favorite, Word Spud. <laughs> Sorry, this tends to happen when I think about words, bud. I guess we better talk about this game, huh? WordSpud is the laughing stock of the Jackbox series, and is often the butt of the joke due to being unanimously agreed upon as hot garbage. This game is crap -ola. So a game of WordSpud goes a little something like this. The game gives the group a random word, for example, horse. This word gets handed to one of the players, and now they have to type another word that plays off of the word they were given. Like horse, shoe, horseshoe. After that, the next player gets given the word shoe, and now they have to play off of that word with another fitting word. Something like shoe, lace, shoelace, so on and so forth. Every time a player submits it's a word, the group must cast a majority vote to decide whether it gets approved or rejected, approve a word to keep running with it, and reject a word to discard it and get a new random word to work with. These votes also award slash remove points from the player who submitted said word, which is how the overall score is kept. Players can also type in word suggestions when it's not their turn. I guess this can give the player whose turn it is some ideas if they can't think of anything, but this never really amounted to that much when I played. 
That's it. No, like, that's words, bud. That is all this game is. You just keep adding words onto the pile until you end up with this big paragraph at the end, and that's the game. You know, like, horse, horseshoe, shoelace, that, that's the whole game. You do that, and only that, the entire time. I genuinely have no idea what they were expecting us to do with this. On its own, this game's concept just doesn't open itself up to fucking anything. I assume that the game is supposed to be funny, but if these are genuinely the rules they want you to play by, then I don't know how that's possible. No one ever knows what to say. We try to come up with ways to make the experience funny, but when all you have to work with is just a word, like a regular ass word, it just makes for an awkward time when everyone's actively struggling to think of anything to write down. Even the in-game description for words but is boring as fuck. Like look, this is how they explain the game. Keep the words rolling all night, just finish the word coming toward you, like mail blank. Mail enhancement you say? You nailed it! Like. That's not funny! Playing this game the way they intend you to brings literally no joy or entertainment value. It's so boring. I think the idea they had in mind was for you to create a funny, nonsensical paragraph that you can read after the fact, but it's just never that interesting. Considering the whole point of the game is to write a word that bounces off the previous word, you're never really gonna be amused or caught off guard by the paragraph as you read it, because even without context, it's pretty easy to tell that it was made just by stringing a bunch of related words together. And as a player, I literally saw the paragraph get made, one word at a time. So if it wasn't funny while I was making it, then I sincerely doubt it's gonna be any funnier after the fact. It especially doesn't help that there are no gimmicks or gameplay shakeups the entire game. Most Jackbox games are split into rounds where there are new twists added as you progress, but here, nothing ever changes. It's just the same boring, repetitive gameplay for the entire duration of the game. As uninteresting as a Jackbox game could possibly be. For a game that's very obviously based on the concept of hot potato, you'd think it might be a bit faster than this, or at least speed up over time, but nope, it's just fucking slow. And I mean shit, as if the game's concept wasn't boring enough, how about this presentation? The entire game takes place in front of this dull gray background, and there is absolutely no host or narrator by the way. Something literally every other Jackbox game has, to give the experience more life and break the monotony a bit. Wordspud is the only game without one, despite needing it the absolute most. I'm convinced it was supposed to have one and they just didn't show up. Finally, there's the music. I think the music in these Jackbox games can get pretty damn good at times honestly, but the music in Wordspud is so bland and unengaging, it really helps the whole thing culminate into the saddest party experience of all time. Just get a load of this. BORING! This game easily deserves its reputation as one of the weakest in the series, quite possibly THE weakest. While there are a handful of other Jackbox games I dislike more than this one, I think it's fair to say that this game is objectively the worst. I find a few others to be a bit more insufferable, but this is the one that I can truly say doesn't succeed at what it tries to do at all. So what keeps this game out of the absolute bottom? Well you know, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, despite everything I've said about this game, it can be a bit fun sometimes, albeit in all the wrong ways. I just can't bring myself to completely despise this game. Sometimes it's just so shit that I can't help but laugh at how horrible the situation I'm in is. <laughs> this is horrendous. <laughs> And mind you, I don't laugh because the game is funny. I laugh because the situation the game puts us in is funny. The situation of pure torture via a horrendous party game. It's so garbage that I just can't help but laugh at it sometimes. Wordspud is an absolute joke of a game, and I laugh at it accordingly. And to be completely honest with you, if you just flat out ignore the rules the game sets before you, you can find ways to make this fun. You could hypothetically use this as a tool to make funny one word at a time stories with, or do what my group tends to do and treat each word as if it were a quiplash prompt and just try to create a funny joke off of it, which can garner a laugh every now and then. Mind you, we never decide or plan to play the game like this, it's just kinda what we resort to. In the end though, yeah, Wordspud sucks. Absolutely zero redeeming qualities, unless you just disregard the game's rules entirely. You can just barely squeeze some fun out of it if you try hard enough, but at that point you're better off doing literally anything else. Avoid it like the plague. Oh wow, speaking of plague, Lysewater, or as I'll be calling it from now on, Lice Water. Lice Water started off as a single player mobile game before eventually making its way into this pack. The most interesting aspect of this version is that it allows up to 100 players at once, which to this day is the largest group a Jackbox game can support. Of course, later party packs would go on to include audience features that let up to 10,000 people spectate and lightly participate in your games despite the player limit being reached. Great feature for Twitch streams and large friend groups, but that doesn't exist here in pack 1, so Lice Water supporting 100 players is pretty neat. I just don't expect that anyone will be able to find that many people who want to play this shit. Alright, so. 
while I do believe that Wordspud is objectively the worst game in the Jackbox series, I could at least muster some enjoyment out of it. I could laugh at its expense, or at my friends when they were being funny and making the best of a bad situation. Wordspud can be fun. Lyswater though? Oh man, my group can't stand Lyswater. Do you remember when I was talking about You Don't Know Jack 2015 and called it the most vanilla trivia experience you can get from the Jackbox series? Well, that was a lie. <laughs> That honor goes to Lyswater. Instead of multiple choice questions like YDKJ, this game instead asks you a bunch of true or false questions. It provides some strange fact, and it's up to you to decide if it's true or false. Get points for answering correctly, and a small bonus for being the first correct answer. And that is it! 21 of these true or false questions, and the game's over. Yeah, I am definitely not a fan of this one, and the same goes for just about everyone else. I already wasn't a trivia fan, and this is probably the least fun concept for a trivia game in existence. You don't know Jack may be a generic trivia experience, but at least it has its charm, and honestly, I don't even mind the format that much. Like I said, with a multiple choice question about pop culture or general knowledge, you can kinda use critical thinking to deduce which choice may be correct, and hey, you might just come across a question about something you're familiar with too. There is absolutely no critical thinking required to answer a true or false question though. It feels like I'm just flipping a coin for all these questions to determine whether I answer correctly or not. A majority of these questions are just way too out there to be considered general knowledge, and it really doesn't help that for the final round, all seven of the last questions cover the same theme, meaning that if you're unfamiliar with the topic in question, you will straight up just be guessing for the remainder of the game. Although, to be honest, it's more than likely that you'd have already been guessing for the entire game anyways. The whole shtick of Lyswater is that they present you with a really absurd statement and are literally just asking you if you think they're lying to you or not. Literally no thought involved. It almost feels like they were more so just intending to wow the players with some crazy facts about the world in the form of a trivia game. It kind of reminds me of these National Geographic weird but true books I was into as a kid. I used to love reading the obscure facts in these books, so to have had a trivia game based on them could have really been cool. This game just feels like it was made for kids, it's sort of weird when you think about it. I mean the questions are presented within these colorful anthropomorphic flies and are written in a childish font. There are all these cutesy cartoony sound effects that play after every answer, the theme song sounds like something from a kid's TV channel, and the narrator even talks like he's in front of an audience of kids. New players can go to this website and enter this room code to join the game at any time. Barney ass bitch. Considering all of that and the game's 100 player support, I feel like this game would work best in a 5th grade classroom. Genuinely, I feel like a group of kids could have fun with this at school, much like those weird but true books I mentioned and Kahoot. Now the only problem with that is, despite the kid friendly presentation, this game does not hesitate to drop loads of questions about penises, vaginas, and just all kinds of mature topics. And while later Jackbox packs include family friendly modes for their games, this pack does not. Meaning that even if you want to to pull out Lyswater for that very specific instance, you couldn't. And even if you could, that still wouldn't make me happy about its inclusion in this party pack or anything. And aside from all that, this game's presentation, much like Wordspuds, is also very boring. Dull gray background, lame ass music, that's all back for more here in Lyswater, so that's nice. The only redeeming quality I can think of for this game is that it's paced fairly well. The questions are fired at you pretty rapidly, and the game's over quickly enough. Even for being only around 7 minutes though, I always found myself beyond tired of it by the end of the first round. Maybe if you like trivia, your opinions on that'll differ, but but even then. This game is an incredibly lackluster trivia experience compared to the others in the Jackbox series, and even just the ones in this pack. It does its job, I guess, so I'd say it's more competent than Wordspud, but I absolutely enjoy it less. And by that, I mean not at all. Not even ironically. Hell, at one point, even the game didn't want us to keep playing it. Lolly bags. Pause. What just happened? Why is this true again? What is happening? This game is glitching. What is happening? Dude, this is not the stream, this is the game. <laughs> There's just no prompt. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Bro, what is the play? The game doesn't even want to play itself. The game doesn't even want to play it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The game is so bad. Why are you playing this? Even on a programming level, this game sucks. Man, talk about buggy. <laughs> And the last game of the pack, Fibbage XL. Fibbage XL is a slightly upgraded version of the already existing Fibbage, a game released for the Xbox One and PlayStation 3 and 4. The XL version here is also available as a standalone title on Steam, and is essentially the same game with some added content. Fibbage is a lot like Drawful from earlier, but instead of drawings, it's trivia. The game presents you with an obscure trivia fact, but with a key detail missing. It's up to the players to fill in the blank, trying to come up with a fake answer that'll trick as many people as possible into thinking it's the correct answer. Everyone's lies are shown on the screen alongside the real 
real answer. Your goal is to identify which answer is real, while also tricking your friends into believing and choosing your fake answer. And that's all there is to it. It's a very simple and straightforward game, and honestly, I like it a lot. As I keep saying, I do not like trivia, but the Fibbage series is a great example of Jackbox games that can make trivia fun for people like me. The twist of having players creatively try to trick their friends with believable fake answers is super fun in my opinion, and makes it feel way less like a straight trivia game like the others in this pack. If anything, the actual trivia aspect takes the backseat in this game. You're never actually supposed to know the answers to these questions. They were intentionally chosen to be obscure and ridiculous. Unlike You Don't Know Jack and Licewater, which ask you questions that you and your friends may or may not know the answers to. With Fibbage though, the fact that no one knows the answers to these questions is the whole point of the game. That's why the whole make up a lie that sounds reasonable thing works so well here. It's just boring to play a regular ass trivia game when no one knows any of the answers. This game knows that, takes full advantage of it, and makes a fun time out of it. Hell, even with trivia being the secondary focus of this game, I found that the group I played this with was way more intrigued by the facts presented here than the other trivia games. I mean, when you purposely avoid picking a certain answer to a question because it just seems too absurd not to be a lie from another player, only for it to turn out to be the actual, real answer to the question, it can definitely make for a ton of, wait, really? moments. This actually got us to look up some events online to learn more a few times. Like I said, this game is very comparable to Drawful, since they both essentially follow the same formula. And honestly, while I generally prefer the drawing games over the trivia games, I think I like how this concept works in Fibbage more. When you get a prompt with a blank in it, you can really put anything you want in there. You can get super creative with your lies. Even if it seems too outlandish to be realistic, that's fine, that's the point. And it could still totally fool the other players simply because it seems too random to be a lie. In Drawful, however, despite being a game about art, there isn't nearly as much room for creativity when it comes to submitting fake answers for each art piece. I mean, the drawing was already deliberately created with the goal of illustrating one specific idea as clearly as possible, so when it becomes time to think of a fake prompt that could fit its description, you can't really do much aside from just interpreting what the drawing looks like to you. As a result, it's usually not as satisfying to fool other players with your fake answer, because honestly, more often than not, the fake answer I submitted is just what I thought the drawing was. The lies you can come up with can be super restricted and directed by what you see in the image rather than your imagination. This results in a lot of rounds containing a bunch of answers that are just different variations of the same idea, since they were all based on the same image. Likewise, you're never really going to be blindsided by the real answer in Drawful like you can be in Fibbage. Fibbage is all about real events and real facts, so when an answer turns out to be insane, it's actually surprising because, wait, this ridiculous thing actually happened? Whereas when the real answer gets revealed in Drawful, it's just like, oh yeah, I, I can see that. that. That is what the drawing is. But again, don't take all of this as a slight on Drawful. It's still good fun, and that's just a small issue that can definitely be worked around with the right group. I just wanted to explain why this game concept works better in Fibbage in my opinion. And yeah, Fibbage XL. Despite being a trivia based game, by god they made it fun for trivia haters. Easily my favorite game in this pack, and that goes for a lot of other people too apparently, as this is currently the most sequelified Jackbox Party Pack game out there. I mean it's not my personal all time favorite or anything, but the sequels are deserved in my opinion. Very solid game. Well well well, that has been the Jackbox Party Pack 1. As you can tell, I've got mostly negative things to say about this one, but honestly I don't think it necessarily deserves all that. I mean, when you think about the context of this game's existence, and think about back when it was released, it makes a lot of sense why the pack is the way it is. It took three of their existing games at the time, and put them in a bundle alongside two brand new games. At the time of this pack's release, it was the peak of what Jackbox games had to offer, and the only reason I complain about it so much is because I'm living in the present. I know how great these packs would later go on to be, and as such, it's not really fair to dump on the original as much as I have simply for not being as good. And honestly, it's not even that bad, it's just very obsolete these days. For the very steep price of $25, you're getting three trivia games, two of which are made irrelevant by the sequels they get in later packs, and the other being dog shit, as well as Drawful, a good game, albeit one that also got better sequels and is irrelevant now for the same reason. So that means that the only thing left to determine whether you should buy this pack or not is how much you want to play Word Spud. So yeah, you should probably buy this one. Overall, I would have to recommend Seer and Clear of Pack 1. It's really not terrible, it's just the weakest pack in the series by far, and will definitely feel terrible if you played any of the later ones. It's a charming little time if you want to see how the series started, but it's not super fun beyond that. And now it's time to cap off this video with the ranking board. Like I said, I'm on a quest to slowly but surely talk about every Jackbox Party Pack and arrange every individual game into a big grotesque ranking chart. Right now, we're going to begin two lists, one list that ranks the five games in the current pack and one that ranks every game in the series. It's the same as list one right now, but will only grow bigger and bigger as we get through the packs. At the end of pack two, I'll introduce two more lists, ranking the overall packs. One of them will rank the packs using math, and the other will be based on my personal opinions. Seeing as we're only one pack in thus far, we can just toss these lists to the side and focus solely on the pack one rankings. Let's 
Toss. Ow! Now, as for these rankings, do bear in mind that they are not supposed to be objective. Rather, they're a representation of how much fun I personally had with each game. So keep all that in mind when I don't put Word Spud in last place and instead put Lice Water there, with Word Spud of course being right above it at number 4. I'm sorry man, but Word Spud actually got me to laugh and I was able to have fun with it. Lice Water does its job better and is more competent in my opinion, but if you don't like trivia, it is boring as all hell, and even if you do, it's still incredibly wimpy, one of the absolute worst of all time. Number 3, You Don't Know Jack 2015. I like the concept but I don't like trivia. Those who do will likely have a blast with it, but for me, it's a very average, not that fun experience. And number two, Drawful, number one, Fibbage XL. Both very solid games that utilize the same concept in different ways. The one you'd end up liking more is simply a matter of preference, I'd say. And that's the list. Once again, seeing as this is the only pack we've covered thus far, we might as well just mirror this list for the entire series ranking list, and that does it for the ranking board for now. Man, some of the games in this pack were pretty rank and got me bored. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Hey, sorry about that, man. Hopefully not hurts. You know what, man? I've been really thinking about it, and in addition to these inflammations you've caused, I'm still kind of bothered by the fact that you just played all those party games without us. Like, we've been right here the whole time, and you played without us. You know what? Fuck it. You really want to play, huh? You guys want to play Word Spud? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, you two want to play Word Spud? Yeah, you really yeah, actually play we do. Alright, then let's play Word Jesus Christ, dude. Alright.